What's up, eggheads? Kenan here with Newegg Now, always bringing you the best products for the best prices. In this video, we're looking at the 1000 watt Superflower Lead X5 Gold Pro Power Supply. This is a really innovative, extremely efficient power supply. In this video, we're even going to take a look inside the PSU so you know exactly what you're getting and why it's so great. So without further ado, let's open the box. All right, so this is everything you get in the box. Of course, you get a user manual. Tons of cables, the PCIe, CPU, CPU, SATA cables, everything you're going to need in here, as well as a motherboard connector cable that can either be, check this out, 20 pin or, this is very cool, 24 pin. That is just so cool. Notice the size of the Lead X5, okay? This is the smallest 1000 watt ATX PCU. It's 13 centimeters in length. That's just 5.1 inches. Even some ITX computer cases might support it. Just 5.1 inches. That's typical for PCUs of 450 to 600 watt. Again, this is 1000 watts. So this is ridiculously tiny. And you might think that that means Superflower had to sacrifice performance, but no. The Lead X5 Gold Pro is 80 plus gold certified, and it still has a 100% fully modular cable design. Okay, you see that right here. 100% fully modular cable design. At 20, 50, and 100% rated loads, it'll be 89.24%, 91.51%, and 89.94% efficient, respectively. So, the smallest size out there, and yet high output. How do they do this? Well, Superflower has incorporated the concepts from some of their very innovative technology patents. They make traditional 12 volt synchronous rectifiers ultra compact on one small card and combine that with the transformers. Superflower calls it synchronous rectifier ultra miniaturization, SRM. It improves performances and minimizes dimensions. Let's open this up and look at the disassembled PCU to explore this a bit further. All right, so here we have the disassembled Lead X5 Gold Pro, the synchronous rectifier ultra miniaturization card, the SRM card I just mentioned is right here. Here is your main capacitor, okay? Right over on this side, you'll notice the active PFC design that stands for power factor correction, okay? Power factor correction, PFC. This type of circuit reduces harmonic distortion in the supply current and creates a current waveform close to a sine wave in order to increase the power factor to a value of one, the unity factor. All right, so the active PFC design really enhances power efficiency. Here, you've got your LLC resonant converter with your DC to DC platform. All capacitors used are from the largest manufacturer of aluminum electrolytic capacitors worldwide. That's Nippon Chemicon NCC, very well known. Here we've got their KMW series capacitors. The main capacitor spec is 400 volts, 560 microfarads, and a temp ranging up to 105 centigrade. Okay, I now want to draw your attention to the Lead X5 Gold Pro's patented super connector design, right? Check out these nine universal connectors which allow CPU, PCIe, SATA, and Molex cables to plug in to any of the sockets. All right, check this out. I got a nine pin cable here. I can plug this into any single socket on the back here. That's just amazing. All right, use it your way. Ultra flexible flat ribbon cables which maximize the PSU's cable routing. It's got that new patented buckle design which I showed you before to be able to change the 20 pin to the 24 pin. Okay, so what a nice touch by Superflower. Hopefully you're starting to see why this type of PSU feels like it's ushering in the next generation of PSUs. All of this incredible functionality in a package so small, yet maintaining high efficiency all around, inside and out. Let's go ahead and plug this in and do a live test. Let's see the airflow and RPM in regular daily use. Okay, so we've got the PSU hooked up to a machine. The PSU has a 120 millimeter fan with a unique 11 blade design for high airflow with pulse width modification, otherwise known as PWM function. The voltage is regulated according to the current demand, providing minimal fan noise. The Eco Intelligent Thermal Control System has two functions, Eco On 
and eco off. <laughs> That's pretty intuitive, right? With eco off, the initial fan RPM is in low RPM status and it'll be automatically triggered according to the internal temperature. With eco on, the fan will initially be stationary. So right now, this would be eco on. The fan is stationary. It'll spin when the temperature reaches critical point T2, which is about 136 to 140 uh, Fahrenheit. Then the cooling fan will increase its RPM when temperature rises until reaching a maximal speed of 1700 RPM. When temperature drops to below critical point T1, about 113 to 118 Fahrenheit, the fan will stop. But wait, there's more, just a little bit more. You have dual overpower protection with this PSU. The first level of overpower protection, or OPP, is when it detects and sustains 110 to 120% loading for a continuous 15 seconds or more. The second level of OPP is activated when the load exceeds 130 to 140% for just one second. The purpose of this dual OPP is to prevent the PSU from being too sensitive and shutting down towards sudden peak loading at just 110 to 120%. It'll reset the time when the loading goes lower than 110%. All right, eggheads, that is the 1000 watt Superflower Lead X5 Gold Pro Power Supply. Cutting edge SRM technology, the synchronous rectifier ultra miniaturization. It's what helps them achieve that ultra tiny power supply length of just 5.1 inches while maintaining 80 plus gold standard at 1000 watts. It's tiny, it's quiet, it's got that new patented universal super connector, two levels of overpower protection so you can run your devices without feeling worried. My dear eggheads, the Superflower Lead X5 is something else. It'll make a great holiday gift for you or a friend of yours who enjoys premium quality products. I've had great fun opening this up and exploring it with you. Let us know what you think about the Lead X5 Gold Pro in the comments or reviews. For current prices, please check the description or click that link below. I'm Kenan with Newegg Now, and now you know. Hi guys, Greg here for Newegg. How many of you usually take a power bank in your bag or pocket along with you when you go out? I bet it's the vast majority of you, and it looks something just like this, right? We have a large uh, USB power out port so you can plug your phone in here to charge it. Oh, what's this over here? We also have a USB-C power in port. That's convenient. But look, hey, it opens up. And ta-da, what have we got here? This is pretty cool. Our earbuds are all in here, nice and charged up. Now guess what? The power bank is actually the charging case. So we get a really convenient two for one. Bring your power bank with you and your earbuds right along for free. Let's check out some of the other cool features here. In the center, we have a digital readout informing us clearly how much battery life we have left in the power bank. And then we also have separate readouts for the left and right earbud, letting us know the independent charging status and remaining power level in each earbud. To use these earbuds is super simple. Once they've been paired for the first time, just take one out of the case, like this, and it will pair automatically with the last device you paired it with. It also has these cool and beautiful green lights that breathe when charging or once connected to your phone to let you know like, hey, we're connected. The nifty thing too is that these earbuds use TWS technology, which stands for True Wireless Stereo, and it's the latest trend in advanced Bluetooth technology. You can use them independently, just one bud in your left ear for example, then left and right channel will automatically be merged, so you'll get the full audio program, not just the left channel. Then you can leave your right ear free to hear all of what's going on around you. Or you can even go with each bud being connected to totally separate Bluetooth devices so you can be really flexible with their usage. Maybe you want to go with all of your music in the left ear from one device and your navigation device connected to your right ear with another one telling you when to turn. Whatever, you can get creative here. The sky's the limits. Another important point to take note of too is that we're using something called Bluetooth 5.0 low energy standard in these earbuds. 
Devices can use data transfer speeds of up to 2 Mbps, million bits per second, which is double what Bluetooth 4.2 supports. Devices can also communicate over a distance of up to about 800 feet or 240 meters, which is four times the 200 feet or 60 meters was allowed by Bluetooth 4.2. Now that's pretty cool, huh? With this bandwidth, we should also have less chance for errors. And hey, who wants to have errors in their music, right? Especially with these eight millimeter drivers bringing some nice clear sound and tight bass. In the past, with Bluetooth 4.2, wireless headphones couldn't communicate over Bluetooth low energy. So they had to use the more classic, power-hungry Bluetooth classic standard instead. With Bluetooth 5.0, all audio devices communicate over Bluetooth low energy, which means reduced power usage and longer battery life. So our earbuds can now deliver about seven hours of music or five hours of talk time on each charge. That's about enough to enjoy a full day of work with music. I mean, we all love to work with music and you know that maybe one hour we should take for lunch and then you're gonna have to take them out, enjoy some real live social interaction with your colleagues before you pop them back in and tune into your space to finish up your eight hour work day. The battery in the charging case is rated at 3,500 milliamp hour. So you can totally get about 120 hours of playtime from this nifty, neat little package. Lastly, one more very awesome point about these earbuds is that they are IPX7. I mean like, wow, why am I so excited about that? Because technically speaking, you could go swimming with these earbuds. Not that I endorse or recommend doing so as who knows, you know, what the chemicals are in your pool, how they'll interact with the metal and the charging contacts and uh, the internal polymers and the little orifices. But hey, if you wanna give it a go on your own, technically speaking, from a water ingression point of view, you're good to go. With IPX7, we are fully waterproof up to about one meter or three feet roughly for all you Americans out there that don't do metric and up to 30 minutes at that depth. Sweating in the gym, jogging in the rain, definitely it's no problem for these guys. Swimming on the surface, Mm, seems possible, but if they pop out of your ear and sink to the bottom of the pool, sorry Charlie, you may be slightly out of luck. And there you have it, that's a wrap for today on our nifty NEK X200 earbuds. I'm Greg for Newegg, signing off. Hi guys, Greg here for Newegg. If you have a laptop with only one or two USB-A ports and have a bunch of items you want to connect to it, or you are tired of reaching down to get to the ports in the back of your desktop and you want to move all that connectivity to a place that's really convenient for you, enter the Atola USB 3.0 hub. And we have right here on the top one, here it is, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven USB 3.0 ports. But what's really cool is that each port has its own individual power switch. Now people might ask, well, hey Greg, so why is that important? The answer is that the less frequently you plug and unplug accessories from USB ports, the longer the ports will last and keep a good, solid, tight connection. The last thing you want when you're transferring your important data around is to have a loose and unstable connection port where you might end up losing data and corrupting files. And we all know just how annoying it feels when that happens, right? So by leaving your accessories always just plugged in and simply switching on and off the port, you greatly reduce the potential risk at the connection point. And who wants to always be plugging and unplugging, right? Well, that leads to the next question. Greg, so then why do we need to have individual power switches? Why can't we just leave all seven accessories plugged in all the time anyway? Well, there are a few reasons. But before I get into that, I would like to point out to you that this hub also features a 2.4 amp charging point at the tip, which could be for your mobile phone or tablet, etc. This is indeed very convenient. But let's keep in mind that the power supply to this hub is rated with an output of up to four amp, which is therefore the maximum current we can draw out of this hub. So if you have seven accessories connected to the hub and at the same time, then remember that some of your accessories may draw power even when you're not using them if they're connected. 
while at the same time you're charging your phone off the hub, you may exceed the 4 amp which the hub's power supply is rated for, and that's not a good idea. As some of your connections, they may then start to become unstable. Hence the benefit of having individual power switches, so you can leave all seven items plugged in, but just switch some off to ensure that they're not drawing power that may put you over the 4 amp limit. Another point is that you may just like to ensure an item is totally disconnected from your computer. For example, maybe you want to be totally sure your webcam is disconnected when you are explicitly not wanting to be watched. Well in that case you can feel totally secure because you've 100% cut it off at the hub. What else I've noticed about this hub that looks promising is the connection cable is a thick heavy duty super high speed USB cable that should be able to handle well the throughput of your 7 USB 3.0 data ports that each offers transfer speeds of up to 5 Gbps and of course are backwards compatible with older versions of USB. Each individual port also has its own blue LED light that lights up when the port is activated to let you know it's now connected. And a smart feature of the power switch is that you need to fully depress and hold down the switch to power off the port for at least two seconds before the port will indeed turn off. This will definitely help to eliminate the chance of accidentally power off an, an accessory with a big finger of yours and losing data. Again, something you really don't want to ever have happen to you. And there you have it. That's a wrap for me, Big G on Newegg Tech Talk, signing off. Hi guys. Greg here for Newegg. What I'd like to talk to you guys today about is this. This is a Wavelink USB 3.0 SATA hard drive disk enclosure. What this will allow you to do is to be able to take a three and a half, uh, sorry, a two and a half inch disk that has a SATA connector on it and put it into a case so that you can bring it around with you whenever you travel, uh, you know, anywhere basically because those little two and a half inch SATA discs you know you can't use them unless you're going to plug it into a dock or you're going to install it inside a computer usually so what do you do with them well I have a little one like this sitting around on my desk at home when I got this case to review it I found this is really cool because this was actually a disk that was sitting in my laptop computer that I hadn't used for some time and I was wondering what was on this disk. And I know actually sometimes it happens, you know, maybe your, your other component of your, your laptop crashes and you don't want to fix it anymore. So you got these disks sitting around. How can you use them again? How can you get your data out of them? You know, it's, it's kind of annoying. You got to put it in dock, transfer every, every data to maybe another storage media. But what you can do with this case is really cool because you just take the case, you take your disc, and you snap it in there, right? And put the cover on, you're good to go. It, it's, it's ready for you to use it just like this. It doesn't need an external power supply. It doesn't need anything else to get it going. And it's now just the same as one of those commercially prepared small two and a half inch uh, drives that you would buy in a shop somewhere for a lot more money. It has this little port here. You plug your USB cable into it and you plug the other end into your computer and you're good to go. The USB of course is backwards compatible. This is USB 3.0 but it's backwards compatible with older versions of USB and this is going to work on Windows, it's going to work on Mac, um, it's hot swappable, you don't need to turn the computer on and off to unplug it. Um, it works just the way it is. And what's good about this as well is that um, we're transferring at 5 Gbps, but we're also using something called UASP. Now UASP is a USB attached SCSI protocol. Uh, it performs up to 70% faster when you compare to conventional USB 3.0 bot that we were using before. And when you have a compatible host controller, the UASB comes with another benefit and it requires less processor resources, actually up to about 80% savings. So when you get read and write speeds now over 300, mega, uh, 300 Mbps, you'll feel like your disk is connected right to the SATA port um, when you're using this case with the UASP, but in fact you're just going through USB 3. That means you're going to be wasting a lot of, uh, wasting a lot 
fewer time for your transfers to go over um, and your computer is going to be faster while you're working on other applications because you're not uh, using as much of the CPU on the transfer and the CPU is now freed up to do other things. The case is really light, um, it's very portable, it's going to uh, keep your disk really secure and um, you can even make it more secure. There's little holes on the bottom here where you can put in set screws so that the disc is really nice and firmly in here. I mean, you, you don't need to do that all the time, just you wanted to change them a couple of times, you didn't need to put the set screws in. But if you're gonna make it kind of more like a permanent installation, put the set screws in and you're good, steady and secure. So this is a really little handy box. Uh, I'm sure there's other ones on the market that you could buy that are pretty cheap and uh, maybe the quality is questionable. But when I looked at this one, compared to ones that I've had before, I found it's not bad, actually. The disc in there is pretty secure. The case cover opens and closes nicely. It just you know snaps really securely into place. And uh, I tested it out I, with my old uh, disc that I had around my home it worked perfectly and I would actually use this myself. So that's my introduction for this lovely little case and I'll be looking forward to be talking to you about next product when you come back to me. I'm Big G, signing off. That's all for now.